Hello everybody, this is Jeff Janess, and welcome to our second lab exercise demonstrating the ArcGIS hydrology tools. We're going to learn two things in this lab. First, we're going to learn how to create a watershed, and second, we're going to experience a problem most people who create watersheds encounter. In order to calculate the true watershed leading into some location, ArcGIS depends on flow direction data being available that shows how water flows across the landscape. Most natural landscapes have numerous low points scattered around which technically have no outflow because they're lower than all the cells around them. These low points are called sinks and they're going to stop your watershed analysis cold. Solution is pretty simple though. You just fill the sinks before you run the tool. But it's not uncommon for people to forget to do that. And here I want you to deliberately fail to fill the sink so you'll get personal experience with this problem. After this lab, we'll try some labs where we fill the sinks correctly and you'll be able to see the difference in your results. Okay, now we start by loading up the, uh, the Flagstaff DEM and the Picture Canyon and I've got them symbolized in a way that I think is attractive. Uh, if you want to symbolize it this way, take a look at the lab exercise. It'll walk you through the steps. And I've also set up a default geodatabase that I'm going to save all my data to. Uh, I've, I've named it Scratch Watershed Lab, so I, I, I know where this is and I know that uh, all the data is going to go in here. Just part of keeping organized with GIS data. Now the first step in creating a watershed is to create what they call a pour point. This is the, the end point at which the entire watershed drains into. Now ArcGIS has a tool to create a watershed, but it depends on a correctly placed pour point at the end. Now you can use either points or raster data sets as pour points. Uh, points are good, but sometimes they're tricky because it's hard to get them located correctly right in the bottom of the drainage. I often just create a little polygons. I draw a little box that I know crosses the drainage properly. It sort of acts as a dam. Then I have a little polygon there that I can convert to a raster, and then I can use that raster as the pour point. Now in this lab exercise, we're wanting to find the watershed that drains into the Picture Canyon Natural Preserve, and we happen to have a polygon for that, and it's in our map already. So we're just going to use that. We're and that means we have to convert it to a raster first. So the first step here is to convert Picture Canyon Polygon to a raster data set. That is the Feature to Raster tool. So we just hit Analysis, Tools, Feature to Raster. Here it is. Input features will be Picture Canyon. The field doesn't really matter here. The output raster, we're going to name it Picture Canyon Raster. And notice it's going into my Scratch Watershed Geodatabase. For the output cell size, I want to use the same cell size as my Flagstaff DEM. And I don't have to type a number here. I can just drag the, the DEM layer into this box. Uh, all this business means that it's going to use the cell size of this particular data set. Now I also want my Picture Canyon raster cells to, to line up with the, uh, the DEM. So remember that whole business about snap rasters in the geoprocessing Auto automation lab? Well, we set the environment here, go to environments, in the raster analysis section we can have a snap raster, and we want our new data set to snap right to the DEM. Okay. Click Run. It's going to create our new raster version of Picture Canyon. Turn off the polygons, and there it is, right there. So, a raster representation of the Picture Canyon polygon. And notice that it is a raster. You can see those square cells. Okay, now we're going to create a flow direction raster from the DEM. This is actually where we're, we're, we're making our mistake if we want to do this correctly. You should fill the DEM before you create the flow direction raster. We're jumping the gun because uh, you're going to do it in the future, so let's, let's learn what it's like. So next up we create a flow direction raster. Let's zoom back to our last extent real quick. It's in Tools, Flow Direction. There it is. 
the input surface raster, the DEM. We're going to name this flow direction unfilled. This is just to remind us that this particular data set we're creating is the one that's going to be problematic because it's, it's created on an unfilled DEM. We don't have to worry about the output drop raster. The flow direction type, we're using the D8 method because that's what you can use later with the watershed tool. If you're curious what these other two are, take a look at the lecture on hydrology. I, I explain what they are. But in the meantime, we're just going to go with the D8 method. Hit run. It'll go to work. And now we have a flow direction. Now every cell here tells what direction the water would flow coming off that cell. And now we can use this flow direction raster plus our picture canyon raster is, is serving as sort of the dam at the end of the watershed to create the watershed that drains into picture canyon. So that's the watershed tool. Hit tools. Do watershed this time. Okay, well, the input flow direction raster would be the one that we just created. The, the feature or raster pour point, remember this is the dam that's stopping the watershed. This is where the watershed all uh, drains into. And we generated this picture canyon raster to serve that purpose. Pour point field doesn't really matter here. We're going to name it watershed unfilled. Now the last step, uh, we want to make our new raster as large as the original raster. Uh, and, and sometimes if, if you don't do this, then it'll just generate a watershed raster within the extent of one of these smaller layers, and that can be a problem. So we want to force it to generate the watershed over the entire extent of the original DEM. So that's in the environments where we set our processing extent to be the same as a layer, we're going to be the same as the DEM Flagstaff Area Raster. And when we select that, it just fills in the UTM coordinates for the extent of it. All right, everything's set up. We just hit go. It generates a wa our watershed that drains into Picture Canyon. Turn off this stuff. And there it is, very small. Notice that uh, the we we can draw the watershed or the picture can preserve right on top of it. The watershed itself barely extends outside of the picture canyon preserve itself. Now this is a surprise. I mean, you can even see a drainage coming in here. And in fact, Picture Canyon is at the bottom of what they call the Rio de Flag watershed. And the Rio de Flag comes all the way around here. It goes all the way up here. It goes up to the top of the mountain. So the watershed should be a lot bigger. And why isn't it? And that's, that's the problem with uh, using an unfilled DEM. Turns out that there's some little cell right up here near the entrance to the preserve that must be a little sink. And so the watershed just backed up to that spot and stopped. So, so now we have a, a watershed that is incorrect. Now, this watershed raster that we created, it actually is as large as the original DEM. That, that environment setting we made did work. If we right click on this layer and go to zoom to layer, it will zoom all the way out. So the watershed raster covers this entire area, but everything outside of the little black part, it has null values. So that's the problem. And that's what I want you to be able to spot the next time this happens to you accidentally. All right. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. In future labs, we'll show how to do this correctly. You take care.